Time to get to Raj rant of the day. Um, and I was looking at a breakdown of pass ratings in play action pass situations for the top 34 quarterbacks um, last season and a pass rating for straight drop back situations. And one thing stood out that was just glaring to me. And Dak Prescott, who, by the way, so just common kind of the common belief. Uh, is that every quarterback is better in play action situations, that all of their numbers become more efficient and more effective in play action pass situations because you can just fool the defense. And, yep, the defense, it doesn't even matter if your running game is effective or not. Your running game does not have to be effective. All the analytics have shown that even with a lackluster running game, play action pass still works. It is. It's <laughs> it's like cleavage. It, it'll All you need is a peak. And that's all it's designed to do. Get you to peak. And once they got you to peak, then it's <laughs> that it served its purpose. And when they do that for the, the back seven, then they occupy the eyes. And if they occupy your eyes, they are trying to, you know, bring something in behind you or trying to occupy your eyes for a reason um, so that they can achieve usually um, some type of deception. All right. So that it, it may be trying to fool you or maybe trying to fool somebody else in the defense. And so all of the, the the analytics say that most quarterbacks are exceptions to the rule. Most quarterbacks, they are more effective out of play action pass. Also, like I said, you don't necessarily need a great running game for your play action pass to be effective. All the analytics say it's uh, it's effective even at the beginning of the game when teams have not established a run. It's effective at the end of the game when teams have no running game at all. The only thing that really makes play action pass, play action pass less effective is when you got a huge lead. Um, and sometimes teams just don't respect it when you know you're, you're coming back from 20 something points down. That may be the only thing that affects it. So looking at that and keeping that in mind. Dak Prescott last year had his best season ever, uh, finished second in the MVP voting, and was a second team All Pro. He actually has the highest drop back pass rating in the NFL last season. Matter of fact, only three quarterbacks were able to have at least a hundred pass rating or higher in drop back pass rating, just straight drop backs, no play action pass, no deception, just straight drop back situations. Only three quarterbacks had a pass rating of a hundred or more. Um, and they were Brock Purdy, Kirk cousins, and Dak Prescott. Brock Purdy was a 100.6. Kirk cousins pass rating in straight drop back situations, 101.9 and Dak Prescott 107.7. Dak Prescott's 107.7 actually is better than half the list, more than half of this list of quarterbacks in their play action passer ratings. His straight drop back passer rating is higher than um, 19, I believe it is. <laughs> um, nope, take it back, it's 15. He's higher than 15 of the quarterbacks on this list play action pass, play action passer rating, which that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> uh, that's how good Dak Prescott was last year. Now, Dak Prescott's play action pass rating is a 95. When you look at uh, quarterbacks on this list who had at least a 95 in both play action pass rating and straight drop back pass rating, um, you end up with four, four QBs uh, in that. Yes, basically with a 95 in both like Dak. And it's Kirk Cousins. Brock Purdy makes it. Um, CJ Stroud makes it. Oh, he barely made. He's a 95.1 drop back pass rating, 122.7 play action pass rating. So CJ Stroud makes it. Brock Purdy makes it. Kirk Cousins. And how about this? One of these things is not like the other. Derek Carr made it among that group. That I did not expect to see. 95.7 drop back, straight drop back passer rating, 108.9 play action passer rating. So only four QBs with at least a 95 passer rating in both play action pass, straight drop back. Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, sorry, five, because Dak Prescott's in there. Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, CJ Stroud, Brock Purdy, and Dak Prescott. And only, if you look at it, only three quarterbacks with a 100 plus passer rating in straight drop back situations, because that's the toughest thing to do. 
The toughest thing to do in the NFL is straight drop back. And it's straight drop back on third and long or second and long. Straight drop back is the toughest thing to do. Because everybody, you're in a predictable pass situation. Everybody knows what you're going to do. I, I was told by a defensive coordinator, that's when the odds finally flip in favor of the defense is third and long, third and seven plus yards to go. And I, there's even a, a stat from the FBS level that says that basically teams average more yards per play than yards to gain on third down until third and seven. On third and six, teams average 5.8. Third and five, they average over five yards. Third and four, average over five yards. Third and three, average over five yards. Third and two, um, average over four yards. Third and one, average over four yards. Um, this is from 2022. Um, so it's a little it's a little old, but not that old. And But on third and seven, teams only average 5.8 yards per play at the college level. So that's when finally the odds flip in your favor is third and long. Because third and long, everybody knows what you're going to do. You got to you got to pass on third and seven plus. And unless you're going to go for it on fourth down, then hey man, maybe you can decide. Hey, I'm getting half that yardage and I can run the football. Texas sometimes would do that with Bijan and Rojo, but usually teams are going to be in straight drop back situations when you're in third and seven plus. Hey, when you're in third and ten plus yards to go, third and double digits. We talked about that with C.J. Stroud. He led the NFL in conversions of third and 10-plus yards to go um, and, and in passing situations. He had 14 passes that were converted on third and 10-plus yards to go situations. And for a rookie, that is unheard of because that is a straight drop back situation. That is the toughest thing to do for a quarterback in the NFL because the pass rush they're teeing off on you because they don't have to worry about the run. DBs know wide receivers got to get to a certain depth. Uh, so that means you can't do quick game. Um, you can't do three-step drop. No, you're getting back to at least five steps in that drop. That means the pass rush got more time to get there. The defensive coordinator knows that you're going to throw it. So he's dialing up the pressure. You take the, you know, the unpredictability out of it, and everybody knows exactly what you're going to do, and you still got to convert. That's the toughest thing to do. So straight drop back to be a, a, a Dak at a 107.7 straight drop back pass rating. Since Dak is out there dealing, Dak's on a whole was on a whole other level last year. Like I said, only 14 quarterbacks play action passer rating was higher than his straight drop back passer rating. That's cold blooded. Now here's something to think about: only seven. There were seven quarterbacks whose passer rating a lot. And Dak is included in this. Whose passer rating? Um, in straight dropback situations was higher than their play action pass rating, which that defies logic. Like we just told you, usually it's a cheat code that helps all quarterbacks in all of their different metrics. Here are the quarterbacks who had higher dropback passer ratings than they had um, play action passer ratings. Kyler Murray, kind of fits. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, who? Mac Jones, Jalen Hurts. Sam Howell, Baker Mayfield, and Dak Prescott. They're kind of the outliers that don't make a lot of sense. That they, they and it, 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 it's a good stat to have as long as your yeah your pass rating isn't low either way. You know, it just shows you that I mean those those quarterbacks may be a little underrated when it comes to just the toughest situation in football, which is hey, just drop back and 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 see if you can dissect and take apart this defense in a straight drop back situation. So. There you go. Uh, that's the exit. Like Dak is Dak stands out here because of that 107.7 pass rating in straight dropback situations. You just don't get that. I, I have to go back and look historically and see how many quarterbacks recently have had that good of a pass rating in straight dropback situations. And by the way, not enough love given to Purdy. If you want to talk about quarterbacks who have a triple digit pass rating as a play action passer and a drop back passer. There, Brock Purdy right now is the only one I see. Speaking of, he, he right now he's the only he's the only. Oh, I take that back. Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins also made it. So there are two QBs on this list that had triple digit passer ratings for both tr straight drop back and play action passer rating. Kirk freaking Cousins and Brock Purdy. Kirk Cousins had a hell of a year last year. He got paid for it. <laughs> He did get paid for it. He did get paid, but there you go. I mean, Brock Purdy. See, people, Brock Purdy's going to get paid, man. 
Because Brock oh, Purdy's no. got some stats to back it up. He's been to a Super Bowl already, too. Uh, Brock, I don't know I, when exactly he's up. It's going to be, I can no, think, another year, maybe so after this yeah, season. Yeah, because they couldn't extended. give him an extention because of the – Yeah, 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 yeah he, he got drafted yeah. too late, so they had to wait longer than they normally would have. Like, yeah, ooh, yeah you, your first round pick. They, I, think they, they I, I think they were like, hey, man, we would have already paid him if we could have because we knew the money's going to keep going up. Yeah, they're smarter than the Cowboys. They're like, we're going to pay him as soon as we can. I wouldn't doubt if he gets paid right after the regular season is over. Like, literally, yeah. the day after the regular season is done, even going into the playoffs, the 49ers are like, no, nah, we signed that deal. Because I think that's when the deadline is. They yeah. sign him right after the regular season yeah. is over. I, I think they'll do it right then before. And we don't know what's going to happen with Dak, but before any of these other deals get done, the Jordan Love deals and all those kind of deals. Uh, all right, uh, there you go. So that's some uh, discussion about the play-action passer rating and the straight drop-back passer rating in the NFL last season. All right, we come back. We'll get into what the facts, what the stats. I got a fact. I want to share it about the Texans, but you know what? I will do it in what the facts, what the stats. We'll do that on the other side um, and have a little fun. 